Well, happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. All right, tonight, you guys, we are going to be tatting another snowflake. So I will be starting at the beginning of the process for for tatting. We did get some cute new uh, tatting shuttles in, uh, so we'll be uh, using those, giving those a little test, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, but that is the deal for tonight, so thanks again for joining me. Uh, let's get going here. All right, and welcome to December, everyone. Isn't that nuts? Uh, we went outside today. It was like 50 degrees out. So I'm feeling pretty good about our December so far here. All right, so let's check it out what we are doing here again. So this is the one that we finished last night. Hey, Darcy. Uh, and uh, I love how it turned out. So this is the same pattern I've been using for the past like week or so. Uh, so we've made four of these little snowflakes. I am just learning how to tat and it's been just like such a fun learning process. So we're just kind of, I'm going to show you guys kind of what I've learned. And uh, if you've ever been interested in tatting, um, this is what it is. This is the whole deal. So it looks a little bit like crochet, but it's actually a lot more like macrame. Uh, it's made by just tying a pile of knots. And the shuttle is basically how we make those knots. <laughs> uh, so this is the one that we did uh, used last night and it has some thread on there yet. So I'll show you how to wind that. But uh, I think I'm gonna make one this color again. We've kind of gone around all the colors and I'm gonna start up um, this one again. So this is, uh, this is going to be for our little Christmas tree. I'm gonna make little snowflakes for all over it. All right, so what color should we do? Um, should we do this with? I'm kind of leaning towards the orange. I think that's kind of cute. Or the green. Should we do green with the, the blue? Maybe we'll, maybe let's do the orange just so that they're contrasting quite a bit. Uh, then we can like see the difference between the, the thread and the, and the shuttle here. So let's start off by winding it. Um, I'm using just embroidery floss, uh, because that's what I have. <laughs> but I think if you use more like a pearl cotton floss on a little ball of um, that cotton, that, that like yarn ball that it comes on versus a skein, that would probably make a little bit more sense. But I know that um, this is just enough, which is a little left over to make one of these snowflakes. And I have tons and tons and tons of this floss. So, uh, ooh, look at that. So I'm going to, use the floss instead. Oh my god, you guys, this is the <laughs> strongest needle minder ever. Uh, got my little needle on there for later though. So I'm going to just trim the end here just so it's nice and clean. All right, so uh, the shuttle kind of acts like a big bobbin to hold the thread here. And so I'm going to wind it up first. So let's uh, start with this hole right in there that you can see. I'm going to just thread my um, floss right through there. So there it's coming out the other side. I'm just gonna kind of hold it there. Okay, and then if we look at our shuttle, it has a little pointy tip on it on one side. So that's the top. Um, what I wanna do is wind it counter counterclockwise uh, on, on there. And you can see it has like little, the shuttle has like little slits in there um, and that's gonna allow us to pass the floss around it. So there we go and it, you can hear that little click. So I'm just holding holding that thread with my finger just so it doesn't pull out and then I'm just gonna go around and around. So this is it. We're just winding up the floss. I'm gonna wind uh, my entire skein here. So this is actually a four meter skein. It's about half the size of a normal skein of floss so this probably um, won't take forever i don't know if a whole skein of floss would fit on one of these but maybe oh thanks craft craft anista all right so I, I wound a little bit and i'm just gonna trim off that 
a little extra. I don't think I need that there anymore. It's just going to get in the way. So boop that off. Oh, and uh, so you guys, I did just get these in the mail today. Um, I wasn't really expecting them till mid-December. Um, I got them because, so I, we tried, oh, Darcy says so, so excited. Um, so I started doing this just like a, like a week or so ago. Uh, I had tried it about 10 years ago, how to tat, and found it just mysterious and really difficult, and I never kind of quite got it. And we had been talking, I, I do these lives every night, and uh, we had been talking about tatting one night, and I'm like, oh man, I think I have that shuttle from a zillion years ago, like literally like 10 years ago. Um, let's get that out and see if we can figure this out again. So, uh, so we gave it a go. I did some research and kind of learned how to do this and uh, started making these little snowflakes. So these are probably the most basic uh, pattern, and, and we'll go over that. Um, and I actually, over on the YouTube and Facebook, I did type up the pattern, but I'll, I'll show it to you guys and you can take a screen grab too if you want. Uh, where can you order them? So I do have them up at penguinandfish.com. That's our website. So in our profile uh, page, that'll, oop, that'll get you there. So these should be able to just dangle too. Like I accidentally just dropped it, but it should be able to just dangle without unwinding. And I think as you get more into tatting, that becomes important. Uh, for these little basic snowflakes, um, I haven't done anything beyond these snowflakes yet, but for these, um, it doesn't matter so much. Ooh, I love that clicking sound though. Oh, thanks, Audrey. Yep, so we're gonna we're gonna start making one of these tonight. So I think it'll probably take us um, two days. I'm, I'll be here for about an hour, maybe a little over. I've been going a little bit over lately. I'm typically here for about an hour. Um, but I think we definitely won't be able to finish it in one, one setting here or sitting. So we'll do it uh, tomorrow as well. But I'm hoping by then we'll, we'll have it. All right, we are almost all wound here. And just to preface, I am totally still learning. This is the only thing I've uh, made so far are these little snowflakes, but I'm just having so much fun with them. Um, and I'm kind of... I'm, I'm itching to do some more advanced stuff now, now that I've had a little bit of practice. Uh, but for now, I just want to fill up my tiny little tree with more snowflakes. Okay, so I have a little bit of floss left. I think I'm going to ha probably have to take some off of there because um, I'm going to need a little bit more. But when we do start, so again, this pointy little tip, that's, that's up. So that's like the front and, and up. We're going to want the thread to come off of it uh, from the bottom. And again, we're just, we're still counterclockwise. Does the tension matter as you're winding? Um, Country Green Mama, no, I, it doesn't. Uh, I, I think it might. So there's other versions of this where you can take out like a bobbin and wind it. That might, it might matter a little bit more. But it, it, no, the tension doesn't matter at all because the tension is going to come from our hands later to do to do the process. This is literally just to hold um, the floss that's going to be like on deck. So we don't really need to worry too much about that. So I just kind of gently wound it in. I didn't really think about tension at all for that. Um, all right. So I uh, am going to get in like the starting position here. So there's actually kind of two main ideas with tatting that were so confusing to me that, that made me one, like I just couldn't understand it from any directions. And then when I got it, I'm like, oh, okay. It's just those two things that I need to know. <laughs> so uh, um, I'm going to just, I'm, I'm going to show you um, what those two things are. Uh, first of all, like the first unit of measurement is like a, is a double stitch. So we are going to be doing double stitches this whole time. And let's just like kind of look at the anatomy of this, for example. So we have a round. I'm going to just use my, my scissors here to point. So a round is this little shape here. So it's just like one little um, loop. And these are a whole pile of knots on the loop. And then these are called picos. This is a really big pico. Uh, here's another smaller pico. So all of those 
are just like some extra slack on on the knot. So it's just a whole bunch of double stitches. So that that's what that's what the knots are are a double stitch, a pile of double stitches with a little slack around it, which are pico. So that that's a round. So we are just going to make six rounds here, and they all just have double stitches and picots on it. So that's kind of the anatomy, uh, just, just as we get started here. And so I'm going to just start. Uh, I'll show you the pattern in a bit, but I want to just show you like how to do it a little bit first. So, But just so you know, we are going to start one of these rounds, and uh, we are going to be using double stitches. All right. So to get started, I am going to hold the thread. You can have a little bit of slack on. So if you're doing a more advanced pattern, you might actually have a whole nother, uh, you might have a whole nother um, shuttle wound and you might even have like two shuttles hanging here or you might have like the ball of yarn still on here. But for just this basic pattern, this, um, this snowflake pattern, uh, I just need like a little bit of slack there. So like, I don't know, four inches or so. I'm gonna just tuck in those threads when we're, when we're all done. And I'm gonna wind the thread around my hand and I, I can't make it all the way around. So I'm gonna get more, more um, slack on here. So I'm gonna just unwind. I'm just gonna unwind a little bit. So it's um, coming off, off the back again. And there we go. So I'm gonna go around my hand and then I'm going to hold it again. I'm going to get a little bit more slack. I'm going to hold it again with my thumb and third finger. So let's do that again. I'm going to like just dangle it there and hold it with your thumb and third finger. You're going to have uh, that slack. And then I'm going around my hand and then coming back up to my thumb and third finger. So I'm just holding a loop here. So what we need to know about this loop is the only thing we need to really pay attention to is the part that's coming from like our thumb to our pointer finger here. So we can ignore everything back here. This is what we need to be paying attention to, this part right there. And if we move our finger down, it'll get slack. And if we move it up, it'll get tight. And that's, that's kind of the motion that we need to pay attention to. We're only gonna work on here and we're gonna make uh, that motion. Okay, so here's our setup. There we are. Uh, again, we're only paying attention to this top piece right here. And oh, and uh, I need my thread coming off the back again. So let's unclip it one more time. There we go, we're in a position. So coming off counterclockwise at the back. I'm gonna hold the shuttle like this and to make a double stitch, we're gonna make like basically knots along this thread. So we are going to do a double stitch, which is um, the first half, there's two halves of the stitch. So the first half is going under the thread, then over the thread. The second half is going over and then under. So we're gonna go under, over, over, under. So just so have that, have that in your head. So to start out, I'm gonna, swoop my uh, hand underneath just so I can get my hand underneath the thread as well. So you can see that, um, so this, this slack that's going to my shuttle, let's just get that underneath, uh, get our fingers underneath there. So we're now gonna go underneath that thread, this one, this slack thread here that we just swooped under, we're gonna go underneath that and underneath that line right there with the shuttle. And I'm gonna show you from the side. So we're underneath both, and I'm gonna move my shuttle, continuing underneath. I'm gonna slide it past my fingers. We're still underneath until it comes out the other side. There, now my shuttle is on the other side. So that's the under part. Now we need to go over. So I'm gonna come back over that thread, and it's gotta slide past my thumb, like dental floss and then um, there we go now we are over and because I swooped my hand under before I kind of am pulling it through that little circle there so that's that's our first part um, maybe here let's scooch these out of, out of the way so you can see on the white a little bit better there here's here's uh, we made like a little loop there 
So that's the kind of the first idea. I'm going to do that again just so you guys can see. This is that first concept that I just totally did not get was the idea of the, the thread sliding past my fingers. So let's do that again. So this is the first half of the double stitch. Oh my gosh, Prince did this, Prince Ali did this in high school. Oh my God. All right, so let's swoop underneath and uh, um, we'll slide underneath our finger there. So we're going under and then coming back over and then we're coming through that little bit right there. So that is the uh, um, that motion that I was so confused about that sliding past my finger. All right, so here is the second part. We the second part that's a little confusing. We have to flip the uh, um, knot from one side to the other. So s see how this is looping around here on my finger, and this is this is tight. I actually want it the opposite way. So I want this loose thread to be tight and this thread to be the loop. So it needs to be reversed from what we got going on here, which, which sounds crazy, but this is how you do it. I'm gonna loosen this finger so it, it becomes slack, while at the same time I'm gonna pull with the shuttle and it, my loop should flip over onto the other side. So let's, let's give it a go so you guys can see what, I'm, see what I mean. So I'm gonna pull and loosen with this side and there we go. So now, now see what I mean? So now my shuttle side is tight and this side has made that loop. See, it's going the other direction. Uh, we'll do it again in a sec, but that is one of the main features that you're gonna to have to do every single time. You're gonna to have to flip that knot on the other side Okay, so I'm gonna now I'm gonna pull with my finger again, this finger right here, just to tighten this up so it goes all the way to my uh, thumb and third finger. I'm just gonna hold it there. But it should still be a loop on this tight thread. Okay, so that is half of our double stitch. The second half, we gotta go over and under. So no, this time I don't have to swoop under, I can just let it dangle. And now I'm gonna go over this thread, then under. So from the side again, here's, here's how you go. You go over, you're gonna slide it past your thumb, and then under. And you're gonna slide it past your finger, slide that shuttle past your finger. All right, so there is the second half. But again, the loop, we have to flip that to the other side. So I'm gonna loosen I'm gonna just slack up that finger and I'm gonna pull with the shuttle. And there we go, it flipped to the other side. And now we can just pull that down. And there we go, that is our first double stitch. And you know that if you've done it right, you should be able to pull on your loop and it should get bigger and smaller. So see how that loop is getting bigger and smaller, it just moves. If it doesn't move, you have not flipped the knot. So if you are totally stuck, this is not moving back and forth, try to unpick your knot a little bit and make sure that you flipped the knot from this side to this side. All right, so that is our first double stitch. Again, here's kind of what it looks like. This is really loose, but that's that's what it looks like. It's like a mirror image of each other. Of each other. So that's that's one double stitch. Oh, you wish I was around when you first started. Well, I hope I hope you are giving it a go again. Um, let me know if any of you guys have tatted before. I am just starting, but I am loving it. It's like <laughs> when I've been working on it, it's that like that new hobby song keeps popping in my head. Like I'm off to start a new hobby. That's kind of what I feel like with with tatting a little bit. So all right, let's do another um, double stitch. Again, a double stitch is our main unit of measure. So we're gonna go under over, then over under. So let's swoop. We gotta swoop for our first part. So swooping under so that this thread is um, on top of my fingers here. So we start out like this, just get underneath. Then we're gonna go under our thread, then over the thread. And then we're gonna let it come through our hand there. And then we gotta flip 
we have to flip this loop to the other side again. So let's loosen our finger and pull on the shuttle. Kind of give it a little tug and there we go. It has flipped to the other side. Oh, you learned on YouTube years ago. I know I had to, I had to really dig, um, dig around for some lessons. It was kind of fun though. Oh, so Alfred says that I taught myself to needle tat. So I have not done that yet, but I'm definitely wanting to dig in more to this in general, um, everything about this hobby. So, okay, so I went under over. Now the second half of that stitch is over under. So over, slide past my thumb, and then under and slide past my finger. There we go. And flip that knot to, to, to the other side there and we can finish pulling it down. All right, and that is two. And again, every single time I just check to see if I can still move my thread back and forth. If I haven't, then I know I need to um, redo that knot, which sucks. You don't want to do that. <laughs> so it's nice to just keep checking to make sure you didn't do a, a knot that was wrong, like eight knots back or something. Oh, why do you have to flip the knot? Because if you don't flip the knot, I can show you. So let's let's just do one. So in this whole process, I should talk about that a little bit. Um, in this whole process, you need to be able to continue to move uh, move your thread through the knot. So I'm, you can see I'm kind of making my, my loop smaller. And if I pull on the bottom, I can make it bigger. That's going to be really important later because we are going to actually pull it tight. And that's what's going to tighten up into this tiny loop. So we need to be able to have that ability to keep pulling this thread back and forth. So if we don't flip the knot, I'll do it once. I'm going to have to pick it out though. If we don't, um, if we don't do the, the knot. Okay. So the too sweet for you is saying to put the knot on the core thread. So that's a good way of saying it. That's probably what it's really called. I, I'm still learning all the terms, but you can see that these two knots are on like the one thread. They need to be able to slide along that thread. So the thread coming out of our um, shuttle, that's like our, the core that it needs to slip on. So if I don't do it, let's just do one where I don't. So I'm going to go under, over, and I'm not going to flip it. I'm just going to pull it down. So I did not flip it this time. I can no longer, I'm pulling on it. I, I can no longer move my loop around. So I know that I've done it wrong. So I'm going to be stuck here now if I, I'm going to have to like start over basically or, or like go backwards a bunch of stitches if that happens. So it, it locks up, it locks everything in place. So I'm going to pick that out. You can actually use, if you need to pick something out, you can use the, the tip there. So I'm going to just try and redo this knot a little bit. And uh, from what I found out is it's a real drag. <laughs> so, uh, if you forget to do that, that flip, you're picking things out and it's a big bummer. Um, there we go. So I'm going to undo that knot. So that's why I've been getting into the habit of just testing it almost every time. I'll just like pull on it. And if, if my knot still slides, then we're good to go. Uh, is this like hand knitting? It's actually more like, um, macrame. We're kind of just making a bunch of knots, like like half hitch knots, on a, on a thread, and all the shuttle is is a tool to make those knots. So it kind of looks like it looks like crochet, but it's more like macrame, um, and, it, and it's called tatting. So tatting is what we're doing here. All right, so I'm gonna make another double stitch, and uh, uh, sometimes you might find that. You're, this is getting like pretty tight here, like you don't have enough thread. I just kind of pull on the bottom thread and that'll, that'll get me more slack there. And if you run out of thread here, like this is not much anymore, then I can just unwind, unwind a little bit more and then we're good to go. Okay, so let's do that double stitch. So I'm putting my hand under, then we're gonna go under that thread and over and pull through. Now we got to flip that knot. There we go. So that's one half. Then the next half, I don't, I can just let this be slack. And then I go over and under, over and under. And we're just sliding it past our finger like that again. Flip that knot. There we go. And now we have three. 
And again, I just give it a little test. Yep, I can still slide around. Okay, so let's do um, another, another double stitch. And then I'm gonna show you guys, um, well, I'll, we'll do a pico next. Uh, that's kind of like the next little unit. And then I'm gonna show you guys the pattern that I'm doing. And we'll go over how to read a pattern. And then we'll just go at it. We'll, we'll keep going with the rest of this, this round. Oh, tatting needles are fun too, but basic tatting is good to know. Ugh, so I'm so ready to get more advanced um, than these snowflakes, although I am really having fun making the snowflakes. All right, so we got three double stitches. I'm always kind of holding whatever I'm working on in between my thumb and uh, third finger, so it'll you'll start seeing the knots come out underneath here. I'm always going to kind of hold right at the, at the top there. All right. And I'll show you what it looks like from the top, because this is usually, I think, the angle that you see it at in, in pictures and stuff. So under, over, flip that knot, and then over, under, and flip that knot. There we go. We'll do one more. Under, over, flip, over, under, oops, and flip. There we go. So we have five double stitches now. I should still be able to move everything. Yep, the red still moves. That's a good sign. All right, we are going to do our first pico. And a pico, again, are these little bloops, basically. These little decorative bloops. So they can be decorative or they can be structural. So if we just look at, um, look at this again, I'm gonna use my scissors to point again. So this is basically where we where we started. We're making a round. So we are, uh, these are our first five, go to about right there. And then we make a pico. So like I said, a pico can be um, pretty like this. This is just a very big pico up here, or it can be structural. So there's actually a pico here. Oops, getting a little blurry there. So there's actually, a pico um, right here and uh, we've attached another loop to it so it's kind of hard to see but that's how it's attached right here so pretty ones structural ones they're made the same way so let's make our first pico so I'm gonna put this back on my hand put the loop back on my hand and I'm gonna hold um, those knots at the top here again Ooh, add some beads too. Okay, so I have not done that before. Ooh, okay, there's so much that I wanna do. You can change colors with this too. Um, we are definitely doing a very basic pattern here um, without all the bells and whistles, but it still can make like just the cutest little snowflake. All right, pico time. So to start a pico, you're just basically making another double stitch. You're actually kind of making the double stitch that comes after the pico but you need to start that double stitch to make the pico. So I'm gonna go under, over. So again, from the side, under, over, and flip the knot. Okay, but now to make the pico, instead of pulling this knot all the way tight, I am gonna leave a little gap. So I'm gonna actually leave a little bit bigger gap. So I'm gonna just kind of push it up a little bit there. There's actually guides that you can buy <laughs> to make all the picos the same size. I'm kind of, I want to make it like half an inch or so. So the size that you make um, this gap is going to be about twice the size, or like this is about twice the size of what the pico will be. The pico will be like this folded in half. So I'm going to just grab that top knot there. I left about, yeah, almost a half an inch. I'm going to grab that top. That's half of our double stitch. And now I'm going to do the rest of the double stitch. So we did the under over. Now I need to do the over under. Over under. Flip that knot, there we go, and pull it down. So there's our double stitch. And the, to do the pico, you just push down your knot and that little gap is your pico. So that is our first little decorative, um, this will actually be structural, but it's basically the same thing, but that is a pico. All right, in the pattern, I'll show you that in a sec, we gotta do more double stitches. So I just I just undid some more thread for some more slack. And we can do under over, and over under, flip. And just continue to do our 
our um, double stitches. So we're basically making like one long row of knots and then we're gonna pull that, those knots together in a loop. All right, so I wanna show you the pattern really quickly and then we will get done with this loop because it's really fun um, to pull the loops together. Oh, the too sweet for you is saying, make your own guides with stiff paper. Ooh, okay, that's a great idea. Especially if I wanna stay consistent on all of these, like the big picos for sure. That's a great idea. Uh, someone last night said, put your, like use your finger as a guide. And I might try that a little bit too, but I'll show you um, the first way I was doing it. But that's a great idea. Just use some stiff paper as a measurement tool. I think I'll definitely, um, maybe I'll get one of those together for tomorrow. Okay, um, all right, the pattern. So here is the pattern that I have written out. Uh, again, you can take a, like a little screen grab of this if you want. I did type it out over on YouTube and Facebook though. Uh, so let's just discuss what some of this means. And this is probably the most basic um, version of the pattern. Oh, thank you, you guys. So I am live here every evening, uh, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Central Time. So uh, I've just started doing that more on TikTok, but I'm also on YouTube and Facebook at that time. Okay, so this is the most basic uh, basic version of a pattern. This, these first parts here, this R1, that means round one. So remember a round is this whole entire loop. So going that one loop is a round. So in this case, we have six rounds, round one, round two, round three through five, and round six. So we have like six uh, loops on here. So six rounds. All right. So it's kind of like row one, row two, um, you know, in crochet or knitting, you'd have like row one, row, row two. Uh, but, but in this case, it means rounds and it might sometimes be written out as rounds. The numbers are double stitches. So it might, you might just see a number or you might see like five DS. That means five double stitches. A dash means a pico. It might also just say pico, but like the most abbreviated form is a dash. So five double stitches, a pico, five double stitches, pico, two double stitches. And then this is like pico, pico, pico. <laughs> All that means is a big honkin' pico. So sometimes it might, you, it might say like five LP, which means five large pico. Um, so in this case, I just put, yeah, or it might just be like two dashes, but I put three dashes just as a reminder that this is like extra big. That's gonna be these little pointy bits there. Okay, and then the rest of the pattern is two double stitches, a pico, five double stitches, pico, five double stitches. And the period is actually important. Uh, you might see a period or you might see a CLR. Um, that stands for close row. So a period or a CL and then R stands for close row. <laughs> it sounds like Pikachu, <laughs> it totally does. Uh, Pico, uh, so close row. And that's when we pull this all together. Like I'm gonna pull and I'm gonna make that, that round smaller and smaller and smaller until it forms this loop. And we're definitely gonna get to that tonight. Um, but anyway, so the one last thing to know about this pattern is a plus sign. So that's not a mistake. That's, that's, um, it's, it's basically a pico, but what that means is a join. So that's like when we join that structural pico. So when we join to another pico. Oh, patterns are important things for covering. Oh yes. So I love, I love this version of a pattern, this super abbreviated. It looks like Morse code. Like, I feel like, I feel like, you know, a magic decipherer being able to, like, I, I like want a t-shirt with this on because no one's going to ever know what it is, but I think that's awesome. But anyway, so a plus sign is a join. So that's just basically the last um, little bit in this simple pattern. There are more advanced things um, that you'll learn um, later in more advanced patterns like chains and um, flipping the work. There's some other, there's some other concepts, but we're going to just keep it simple to here. Uh, and then, you know, row th or round three through five, I'm repeating round two. So again, five and then a join. We're going to be joining to the last round there. 
which will make sense once we go through it. And then the last row, what makes it different is that we are also joining it. Um, there's one last join there. We're joining it to the first round, basically. So anyway, so that's the pattern uh, for, for these little snowflakes here. So this is kind of what I'm looking at. I've done a few, though, now. I kind of have it memorized at this point. Uh, but that is the um, pattern here. So right now, I have my five. Uh, we can see where we're at in the pattern here. I have my five double stitches, so that's that's this. I've done the one pico, and I've, I now have two double stitches, so I have to do three more to get that five, and then we're gonna do the rest of this round here. So I'll just have this nearby so I can see it, but let's cruise through. I wanna get one of these rounds going. I'd actually like to get several of them done tonight. Um, okay, we have three more double stitches, so let's do that. I'm gonna make I'm going to just like pull on my thread here just to make my um, working area a little bit bigger. And I think I have enough slack on my, on my piece here. Uh, I am using just normal six strand embroidery floss right now, um, Olive. That's probably not really recommended. <laughs> I'm using it because I have it. But I think like a pearl cotton floss, like a more tightly wound. What, what you don't want is something with like flex and bumps and stuff in because then you won't, you, you need to have this sliding motion. Um, if you can't keep this sliding motion, uh, like bumps might get in the way. Like, you know, like a decorative yarn or something might be too lumpy um, and it wouldn't be able to get on the um, shuttle like this. So I think a pearl cotton thread is probably more recommended, but I have this embroidery floss and it seems to be working just fine so far. All right, under, over, flip the knot, over, under, flip the knot. Okay, what was that? One, two, three, okay, two more. Oh, the two sweet for you says I started with uh, 10 crochet thread. So yes, so crochet thread, that's that really tightly woven um, cotton thread that comes on a nice ball. Um, it's similar to pearl cotton um, thread. That's that's totally, yeah, that'd be great. Under, over, over, under. And I'm always doing that flip. One, two, three, four, one more. And I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room here. Under, over, flip, over, under, flip. There we go. So next up, that's our five stitches there. Next up is another pico. Let's get a little bit more slack here. Unwinding a little bit more. All right, under, over, flip. So I'm gonna get that kind of like a half inch or so again. Leave that there and then finish the stitch over, under. All right, and now we slide down our knot and we got that cute little Pico there. And oh, hawking tatting. My mom used to do that. Oh, I thought the art was dead. Good job. Oh, I am just learning and I'm having like so much fun with it. it it's so portable. Like, this is literally all it is right here. It's just kind of crazy. Um, someone had mentioned um, before when we were doing this that her mom or her grandmother, I don't remember, um, would keep it in her apron. So while she was cooking, she'd just do a few little stitches, stick it back in her apron pocket, and be good to go. And I just freaking love that idea. I love the idea of like walking around with this whole project in your pocket. That just is awesome. Okay, I need to do one more um, double stitch. And now we're gonna do our super big pico. So that's, that's this one right here. So I'm gonna need more slack for this. So. Oh, maybe not that much, so let's pull it back a little bit. There, I got more thread there. And let's do that double, half the start of the double stitch. So flip the knot, and there we go. I want like a whole inch or something here. So about like that. So I'm gonna, that's kind of tough. I'm gonna hold that there, so I'm holding that knot. Let's finish that double stitch. That kind of locks it in place, flipping that knot. And now I'm gonna slide down that knot. And there, now we got a, our big old bloop there, our big pico, which once we starch it, it'll be like nice and pointy like that. Okay, that's our big pico. Let's give myself more slack. Our thread is still moving through here, so that's good. Always checking that. All right, I need more thread off of the shuttle here. There we go. Um, I need to do one more double stitch. Flip. And over under, flip. Okay, we got our 
second smaller pico to do. So starting the next double stitch, let's bring that down to about that half inch again. Hold that there, over under, flip that loop and push that down. And there we go, that's our uh, small pico. So you can see um, it is like one long row that we're doing. Just like a whole long row of knots and those knots we're going to be pulling tight and that's what's going to make that loop. All right, so um, this is like the halfway point. Let's just keep going. I got another five um, double stitches, another pico, and then five double stitches, and then we can pull this puppy um, tight. All right, and it should still all be able to slide um, on the thread here. If not, then um, just give a little tug on on this thread because this is our the thread like the core thread that it all needs to be moving on, and see if you can pull. There we are. Okay, let's get more of these double stitches going. If it gets all wound up, you can just let it dangle. It should it shouldn't it shouldn't unravel. Can you go back and adjust the pico size? So. Uh, Linda, as far as I know, probably not, um, not without, um, untying knots. So you're pretty much committing, um, committing to these knots. So you can just by pulling, pulling on the Pico a little bit, you can make it a little bit bigger, but once you got the Pico, that's, that's probably the size it's going to be. That's why having a little guide is, um, a good idea. Yeah, so the too sweet for you um, says yes, but you have to pick out your knots. So yeah, so you gotta go and untie all these knots, which is not fun. But if you do want it to be perfect, <laughs> like super perfect, which, you know, is sometimes overrated, um, then you do have to pick out the knots and go back to your Pico and redo it. Um, so don't recommend, <laughs> uh, but if you have to, you have to, and that's how it, that's how it goes. Yeah, definitely not fun. You want to avoid it. All right, so we have one pico or one uh, double stitch there from our pico. We need four more. Okay, over under. Over. Oh, wait, that was under over. This is over under. <laughs> Get confused. All right, so that's that's two, three. Four. This is what makes it look like magic. It looks like you're just shimmy shamming all over the place, and it, all of a sudden you got like this whole thing going. It's kind of crazy. All right, that's five. Get some more slack. Get more some slack here. All right, I need to do my last pico for this round. Oh, I don't know. Right there looks. Decent. I'm gonna actually make it a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna just kind of pull out the thread a little bit. That looks decent. Finish the stitch. Pull it on down. There we go. And four more double stitches, and we are uh, done with with this. Flip it under. I have a little bit, maybe too much slack here again. So I'll do, I'll just get a little bit more slack away here. And then maybe I'll show you from the side again, just if you're just popping in to see kind of what the motion is again. Okay, let's get a little bit more slack so I can get this area bigger. Oh, your mom could do this without, without the shuttle. Oh, interesting. Um, so I know there's like needle tatting. Uh, it's very similar to macrame. Gosh, I would love to learn more about it. That would be interesting. To dig into that. Oh, so here I wanted to show you from the side again. So we're making that double stitch, which is um, two halves of a stitch. The first is under over, and the second half is over under. So I got to flip the yarn or the thread so my fingers are underneath, and I'm going to go under that thread and under our like working thread there. Um, so from the side again, I'm going under with the shuttle, sliding it past my finger till it's all the way through and then going over. So sliding it past my thumb and then I'm going through the part of the loop that was on my hand. And we have the, this loop is on that side. We need to flip it to the other side. So I'm gonna 
just let this thread be slack. I'm gonna pull on the shuttle and there we go. The loop has flipped to the other side. So that's the first half. The second half is over under. So we're gonna let the thread dangle and then here's from the side again. I'm gonna go, the shuttle's gonna go over the thread, slide past my thumb and then under and slide past my finger. Oop, and I got stuck on my finger there. We need to flip that knot to the other side. There we are and pull it down. Okay, and we got one more to do. So under, over, flip, over, under, flip. Okay, so here is our whole round. This is all of our stitches all up on there. So the last thing to do, it's that period in our, the period in our um, pattern here, that close row or close round, I mean. And uh, what we do for that is I'm just gonna hold on the end here and we are gonna pull, here, I'll do it on the table so you can see. I'm gonna just uh, pull and it's gonna just pull in all that slack. Ooh, getting my beginning thread in the way. Until all that slack is gone. I gotta pull it a little bit more. It's easier to just hold it in between your fingers. And we're just left with like our, our round. So there we go. All those knots were in a whole row and I just pulled on, pulled the thread tight, pulled my circle tight. And uh, we got ourselves a cute little uh, start to our tatted snowflake. Now at this time, I sometimes like um, using the point of my thread here, of my shuttle and kind of pulling out, pulling out those picos a little bit just cause I like them a little bit bigger, I like to see them. So I'm basically tightening those knots by making these a little bit bigger. I think it's easier um, for the next row when we have to join to one of those when I pull those out a little bit. I don't know if that's a normal thing or not, but something I started doing. But there we go. And we kind of want to get this like just where we want it to. Like if you want it a little bit looser, uh, you can pull it like super tight and that'll get your, um, your um, row, your round will get like a little smaller. There, so that's a little bit tighter. That's pretty cute. Um, I think I've been, a, I was a little looser with this one compared to here is my first one. Um, so I think I did pull these ones a little bit tighter than this one. This one's a little bit looser. They're both totally fine, I think. So there we go. We'll use this one as our guide for how, how tight to um, pull it. But there we be. Um, all right. It really makes me, oh yeah, so Barbara's saying it really makes me wonder how someone came up with the idea of doing this. No freaking kidding. Uh, I'm here sitting in amazement. Oh gosh, I know, isn't this funny? So like, again, it really is a lot like macrame. You are just tying knots along a, a, a piece of thread, really. Um, but you're just using a tool to make the knots. I mean, I think really the purpose of this tool is to hold on some backup thread, and um, to help tie these knots. And that's why there's like the needle way of doing needle tatting too. And I think you're just doing all the stitches on a needle is what it looks like. I haven't done that, but um, you know how I had these all spread out before I pulled it, it was just like one long row of knots and then you pull it tight on the loop. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. I, I'd love to know <laughs> how anyone came up with this. It's just so interesting. Okay, so we are going to start the next round. Uh, we basically have to make six of these, and that's that's the whole job here. Um, so I'm going to start a... I'd like to try and get another one done. Uh, oh, Coulter B, um, we, we did test this out yesterday. Coulter B is asking, does it matter if you're left-handed? So we did kind of... Like, I tried to do it left-handed yesterday. And uh, um, I mean, if you do have any, if anyone knows how to left hand tat, uh, let me know if you have any tips. But we were able to do it just fine. Like, I don't think there's any change really. Um, so you would just hold it in your um, right hand instead. And then the only real difference I could tell was you want the thread like going away from you to start. So normally when I'm doing it right handed, I want it going clockwise and off the back. Um, or off off the um, the bottom um, to the right, but if I'm holding it left-handed, I don't want that in the way. So I would just have it uh, just come off off the top side. But 
it, it would just be pointed away from you. So I think, honestly, that's the only difference. We even did a couple stitches, some double stitches, and it, it's exactly the same. So if you're left-handed, I don't think you'll have any problem whatsoever um, doing this. There's like no change, really. Here, I'm gonna just wind up this thread on here again. I think I undid a little bit of it. Okay, so for right-handed, you want it kind of coming off the bottom. The other thing with left-handed, I mean, you could just wind it on clockwise probably instead of counterclockwise. That would probably do the job too. Uh, but I think just like making sure it's coming off on the other side would probably be fine. Oh, Crunchy Green Mama is going to try a left-handed tat. Awesome. Yeah, so we did actually do a few stitches last night, and it felt exactly the same, except for that I'm super awkward <laughs> with my left hand. But it did, it did work. So I'll just kind of show you the motion again. So we'd be going... Oh my gosh yeah we'd be going around our hand this way there we go so here here would be my working thread i would need a little bit more you would just do the swoop under and under over oops i gotta hold it there with my finger <laughs> so you you can still do the motions it totally works i don't think you, you'll have any problem um just flipping this around and doing it left-handed at all all right so let's start the next round um, so I'm going to hold it again. So I'm going to hold this whole piece, but I'm going to hold like where I want to start next right here uh, in between my uh, third finger and my thumb again. So kind of like how we started, but now we just got this whole pile of junk here that we have to deal with too. Um, and we're going to go all the way up and around our hand again. And then we're going to come back right to that spot and I'm going to hold it with both fingers again. So same as how we started. Holding it with my uh, thumb and third finger, going up and around the hand, and then holding it back in the same spot with my thumb and third finger. And now we're going to just start. So let's we're going to start the next round, which is exactly well, pretty much the same as this round. The the one difference is we're going to add a join to it. Okay, so let's get set up here. I want it coming off the back. All right, let's do our first double stitch, our first half of the double stitch under over. Flip that knot, and I'm going to pull it so it's right um, at the center there, like right where this last one ended. Just hold that in place. Now I'm going to go over, under, flip that knot, and pull that down there. So that's our first uh, double stitch right there of the next round. Again, I should still be able to move my thread back and forth through it um, to pull it tight and loose. And if I can do that, then the knot has flipped correctly and we're good to go. So, all right, let's just go through this pattern quick. Let's see if we can do another one of these rounds. Oh, and I'll show you the join. So I have to do my first five stitches first. Okay, so under, over, flip, over, under, flip. That's one. That's actually our second one. So this is our third one. Three, four, little bit more slack there and five under over flip over under flip okay so there's our first five stitches now we're doing one of those like construction uh, we're using we're using that pico as a construction element um, and and this is called a join so in the pattern it's that plus so instead of the the little dash meaning the pico we are making, it's the plus sign, which means a join, uh, joining to a pico. So we are going to join it to the pico that came on the round before. So we're going to join this to this pico right here. So to do that, oh, Amy says, I can't seem to get the flip knot part down. OK, we'll, I'll go over that again. Um, we'll do that slowly again here, because yeah, that is like, you got to be able to get that because that's the part that allows all the slack for sure to work. All right, so let's join to this pico. So what we're going to do is our thread from, you know, our thumb to our, our pointer finger there, that thread we are going to put underneath the pico. So there, we, there you go. You can kind of see it through the pico. And then we're going to take the little pointy end that we haven't used yet, the pointy end of our shuttle, and we are going to dig that out. So we are going to go into our pico, and we are going to use the point to dig out the thread from the back there. So let's, let's do that again quick. 
Like, can you join to anything other than a pico, like a double stitch? I don't think so. I think it's typically just the pico. And, and the reason why is because you do need this space. You need to get in there um, to pull out that back thread and you just wouldn't be able to do that um, through a double stitch. So I don't think th so. I suspect, like all the tatting I've seen, um, just, you know, in my small amount of looking at it, it just seemed like it was always a pico. So p picos need to be structural uh, for that reason to join. All right, so I'm going to pull that thread through till I have enough pulled through that I can put my entire shuttle through. So I'm going to put my entire shuttle through that thread that we pulled from the back, and then I'm going to just pull it on back. So we have just basically gone through that, made a loop through that pico, stuck our shuttle through, and uh, um, then pulled the thread tight again. And I still want to make sure that if I pull on this, my loop is still mobile, and it still is, so I'm good to go. So that's our join. It looks a little crazy now, but once we pull all this tight, uh, we'll be good to go. So we'll be joining, um, all these, these first picos will be joining to the next round um, every single time we add a round on there. So, all right, so let's go through the rest of this pattern. I think we can do it pretty quickly here. It's the same pattern. So that's the only thing different with, with the second round is that um, we're adding that join. <laughs> Sour bead uh, is, um, or Sour Pea Design is saying, this is so cool, I'm about to have a new hobby. I know, like I, I was saying earlier, like that, like I'm off to start a new hobby. <laughs> song is totally in my head. I, I, this is all pretty fresh to me too. Is a round the same thing as a ring? Uh, Lynn, I think so. And maybe it is a ring. Maybe I'm calling it round or a round. Um, maybe I messed that up. Uh, so my guess is yes. <laughs> uh, that anytime you have like this loop that joins, it's a ring. Oh, maybe it is a ring. Maybe I'm saying round differently. Oh, I'm gonna have to look that up now. Now I'm confused. I think a ring or a round, I'm, I'm thinking that's the same thing. So, all right, um, let's continue. So I need to do five double stitches. I always want to say double crochets, <laughs> but double stitches. So uh, under over and, oh, let's, let's do that flip again, but let's, let's finish this stitch and I'll show you the flip. We'll do another one of these um, slower. So, all right, I'm going to give myself a little bit more slack there and all right, so under, so we're going under over, and then over under. So for the under over part, I gotta flip flip the thread. All right, I just gotta like get my hand underneath um, the thread. So I kind of have like two bits here that I'm going under. So we're gonna go under both of those. And from the side again, here, the shuttle's gonna go under. Under and past my fingers, we're sliding past my fingers. And then, I, then I'm gonna go over on the way back and I'm sliding past my thumb and then I'm kind of pulling through. So here's here's that flip part again. So if I pull, if I pull, um, if, I, if I bring my finger, my pointer finger all the way up, so it's tight and my shuttle is loose, you can see that the loop kind of goes around the tight uh, finger here, right? So you can see that right there, that, that loop. We want it the, the other way. And by the other way, I mean I want my shuttle to thread to be straight and and uh, um, my finger thread to be loose so that this um, this loop actually goes around this thread instead of this thread. So how I do that is I, I loosen this hand, this finger, like by just going down. See how it loosens? So I'm just moving that finger down and it, it makes that go slack. And at the same time, I'm gonna pull on uh, my um, shuttle thread. And uh, so I'm gonna do that motion at the same time. And this loop, which is now on this tight piece, should jump over to the other side and be on the, like what, the, what will be the shuttle side, the, which will be tight. So let's loosen this and tighten this at the same time. So going slack with my finger and then pulling on the shuttle. And then there we go. Look, the loop is now on my shuttle side. See what I'm saying there? So we can even go back. If I, if I tighten my finger and slack my shuttle, it'll 
pop over back to the other side. See, so now that now that loop is back on this this side. We want it to be on the shuttle side. So I'm gonna loosen that again and pull on the shuttle. And there we go. So once it's on the shuttle side, so the shuttle's thread is nice and tight. Uh, I can kind of shimmy that down. As long as I keep the shuttle tight, I can shimmy that down all the way to my other knots. And we're gonna do that every single time because we need to be able to slide, um, pull on the thread and slide um, those knots along the shuttle thread. Okay, so that was the first half of the double stitch. Let's do the second half. Now we're going over. I don't, I don't have to do that flip on the second half of the stitch, so I'm gonna go, just go over. So over that thread, slide it past my thumb, and then under with the shuttle, and it slides past my finger. And there we go, there's our loop that's on this side. We wanna flip it to the other, so I'm gonna go slack with my finger and pull on the shuttle. Sometimes you gotta just pull a little bit, and there we go, it flipped to my shuttle thread. And I'm gonna just shimmy that down. All right, and I think that's just two. So that's that's the flip. Okay, Amy says I keep pulling the thread off my left hand fingers. Oh yeah, so I've been kind of doing that a little bit too. Try maybe making it a little maybe smaller. Like maybe it's too um, maybe it's too too big. Like if it's too big like this, then you're just stretching out your finger, and maybe maybe that's the case. I'm not sure. Otherwise, it probably just takes practice. I, I know I'm still trying to get used to it. I keep curling it up the thread all up on my finger and that's not right either. Okay, so let's, this is three. So under, over, flip, there's that flip, and over, under, and flip. I'm gonna get a little bit more thread, so I'm gonna unwind a little bit more. And under, over, flip, over, under, flip. One, two, three, four, five. You gotta get that flip though, um, and then test. Can I still pull my thread through? And if you can, then you're good to go. Otherwise, you gotta pick out knots, and that sucks. Okay, um, five. Now we're doing like our top little decorative picos. Um. Oh, Lady Jane says thanks. Thank everyone so much. I can use the needle, but not the shuttle. I can see it at last. Ugh, that's awesome. So I have not done the needle tatting before. I do want to try that, but I am just like really loving these shuttles. I think it's because they're just like a little magic trick. I'm going to let this dangle and unwind a little bit more. Um, so we do actually, I did get all these pretty shuttles in um, the mail today. That's why I'm kind of testing it. So if you want one of these cute, colorful ones, we do have those over on the site. Um, starting like this afternoon. <laughs> All right, uh, okay, we're on that decorative part. Um, I'm just looking at the pattern again. I have that written next to me here. Um, a small, we're doing that small pico now. So under, over, flip. Okay, and this is where I leave the little bit of a gap. That's probably pretty good, the half, half inch or so. And then over, under to finish and flip, finish that, that double stitch and then we slide that down and that gives us our little pico okay um i need to make another one another double stitch flip flip um and this is where i need to make the big pico so i need a little bit more slack on both sides here okay making the the um first half of the knot I think about there. And then the second half, flip. There we go, this is our big pico. I left a really big gap, and now I'm gonna slide that down. There we go, that's our big loop. Kind of in our way. Let's do our double stitch. I need a little bit more slack. There we go, over, under. Okay, now we need another small pico, getting, getting more slack here again. Okay, that's about right. So this is where I would use like that tool or a piece of paper just to keep this all consistent. <laughs> right now I'm just kind of guessing. It's about a half inch over, under. Okay, that's our top little decorative pico area. Get some more slack here. And um, 
this side. All right, so I need four more uh, double stitches now. So one. I'm trying to get fast. Two. Oh, see, I got caught on my finger. Just shimmy it down. I need a little bit. I only have a tiny bit of working thread here. Let's make that bigger. So I'm just going to pull my loop bigger. Oops. Let's see. Yep, we're still moving on our thread here. There we go. Okay, so I have one more pico and then uh, five more stitches. So this is the first one of the first of the five stitches, but we're going to get our pico at the same time. There we go. Okay, that's one. Oh, Sarah, we are tatting. <laughs> so I'm making little tatted snowflakes. We're kind of going through the whole process tonight, and tomorrow um, we'll finish up the snowflake. All right, so that was one, two, Three, get a little bit more slack, four, oops, and five. Flip. Okay, so again, here is our long um, our long little thread there. Can you buy the shells from the UK? Yep, we, we ship everywhere. Um, you can probably find them there for <laughs> much cheaper though. Um, so they're called just tatting shuttles. Uh, so any kind of large craft store should have them. I don't know, like a, I, I mean, I don't know what stores they have by you, but um, like a large Joann's should have them or something. Uh, but yeah, so a tatting shuttle. And this is what they look like from the side. So th there's a couple different versions, but this is the kind that I've been liking so far. It has the little hook on there and the little hole in the middle there. And we wind, it has little openings on the side here too, like there and there. And that's what we wound our thread onto. Like we wind it right past those little notches. Um, uh, this is the style that I've been liking. All right, so there we got our long little row of knots again. And now I'm just going to pull and close our loop, just pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling until that loop gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it meets up at our beginning again. So I'm going to just keep pulling until it's about the same size as our last one. I think we can go a little bit more. And there we go. That's our, our like second, second uh, round there, our second ring. I think it is ring. I think I've been saying round, but I think it is a, supposed to be your ring. <laughs> oh, well. Um, so there we go. So and here's that join. So remember, we did that join at the Pico. So that's that right there. That's what's holding these two rings together there. And uh, um, then we got our other little Picos. So Farley says I have my great grandmother's and it's metal which is great um but until i didn't know how to use it oh thanks oh yes so uh there are some other versions sometimes you know i was winding my thread around the center here sometimes you can sometimes it's an actual like bobbin that you can pop entirely out and then wind it separately and pop back in uh in that case um, these little sides are probably closed. Like you probably can't, um, you can't get the thread through there. That's because it's on the bobbin and the bobbin will just rotate in the middle. And sometimes those have a, like a little crochet hook on the end, but it, it all serves the same purpose um, as this point. It's just to dig out um, the thread when you do those, those joins. It's to dig out um, the thread through the pico. So um, they look a little different, but same function. I'm thinking that, um, oh, it is rings, chains and rings. Oh, okay, so I've been saying rounds. Uh, 
<laughs> so the R's, the R's are rings. Uh, when someone, uh, whoever said that over on, on Facebook, the moment you said that, I'm like, oh, yep, I think these are rings, not rounds. <laughs> Got the R right, but yeah, so so rings. So these, are, they will have the six rings here. <laughs> Oh, you've only ever needed needle tatted. Is it easy to learn the shuttle? So I've um, been learning uh, this past few weeks. And uh, once you know the basic concept of like the movement of it, then it's super duper easy. Um, I'm going to do, a, I'll do a little um, abbreviated, like a shorter. I mean, this is all live and we've been going for like an hour and 10 minutes now. Um, but I'll try and edit this down and do a just a TikTok, like a short thing of just like those little motions. Cause I think tonight we're gonna probably stop now. Um, but yeah, so we'll go through, I'm gonna continue this tomorrow. I'm hoping to actually finish tomorrow, even though we do have quite a bit. So I might stay a little bit longer tomorrow um, just to finish it. So we'll actually starch it and stuff like we did this one, starch it and press it and everything too. Cause if you can see now, like these are big kind of big like open flowery loops compared to these which are nice and pointy that's because i i got it all wet with starch and then i pinned it i pinned it up straight and then um dried it with the iron so uh, i'd like to show you guys how to do all that again because that's really what makes it look like a nice little snowflake i think the little pointy pointy ends right now it kind of looks a little bit more floral um amanda saying do you have videos i can watch Oh, as it's 3.40 in the morning. So yes, so all of these videos are up on my YouTube and there should be a link right from TikTok if you're on TikTok um, to to the um, YouTube. And I think I, I have a, tar a tatted, um, not folder, what do they call them? Oh, playlist um, there. So, uh, so this video that you're watching right now will be up immediately when we're done here on YouTube. Uh, so that's what I would suggest is to find this one. I think it's called um, like a beginner snowflake video video one, tatting a beginning snowflake, something like that. Uh, it'll be the newest live video uh, that will go up immediately when we're done here. And um, then tomorrow we will finish it up. So, uh, oh, you use um, starch starch and oh half elmers and half water mix Ooh, that's a great idea so i should be i just lightly very lightly starch these but if you really want these as like nice christmas ornaments for a while that elmers idea is a great idea um like really kind of glue everything in place and then you know pin it down and, and let it dry because uh, then you'll have like a nice solid um you know, ornament or a little snowflake that'll la that'll stay in its position for a long time. I just kind of lightly did it with a little bit of starch and water that I had had here, but that's a great idea. I might actually go back and do that, like a half half Elmer's half water um, for all this. Oh man, it says thank you. I have a new hobby. Yes, give it a try. I'd love to see uh, what you guys think of it. But yes, yeah, so I will be back here. Oh, Amy says right now it looks like a masquerade mac mask. Ugh, it totally does. This could be like a cute little owl or something. Ooh, that'd be cute. Like finish this up as a little owl. Oh man, now I need to make tatted owls. <laughs> It'll happen. Uh, especially now that I have like all all the um, shuttles in the shop. I think I'll definitely be doing some more, uh, more tatting with this for sure. Uh, but yeah, so I will be back here tomorrow. We will finish this up. You know, I'll probably stay late to do that, so it might be it might be closer to a two hour uh, tomorrow. Um, gosh, at least an hour and a half. Uh, we'll do the other four rings and then uh, starch it and press it to finish up our snowflake. Uh, that will be also be live at 8:30 p.m. Central Time, and it will be up on YouTube when it's done as well. And I will make it. I'll make it a um, on TikTok. I'll make it a uh, event again so um if you go to my page it'll be under events or whatever and i think you can get notified uh, once we go on but otherwise it'll be 8 8 30 p.m central tomorrow again so thanks again everyone for joining me uh i just this is like literally like my new <laughs> fun hobby like I'm off to start a new hobby like I gotta buy all that premium products for the hobby so luckily with uh, with tatting 
you know, these little shuttles, there's not much to them. They're, pr they're pretty cheap. Thread is cheap. So, uh, um, <laughs> premium products. I haven't dug into the premium products uh, of um, tatting yet, but oh man, if you just do a search on Etsy, people are like hand carving these shuttles and stuff. They just kind of look amazing, but I'm pretty good with my cheapo little pretty plastic ones and my embroidery floss for now. So we'll see. Maybe I'll graduate to the premium products at some point, but but we're pretty good right now. <laughs> I'm having a fun time. So, I, and I definitely want to try some more advanced things as we go along here, but I'm, I'm having fun with these snowflakes uh, for now. So thanks again, everyone. Uh, like I said, I'll be back at 8.30 p.m. Central Time tomorrow, and we'll finish up another snowflake here. Then maybe, it'll, maybe I'll take a little break from the snowflakes. We'll see. So all right, have a fabulous evening, and I will see you tomorrow. Good night.